Thanks for joining us and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Periodically, we'll bring you true stories of angelic encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. When we come back, we'll begin our next episode. Hello again, and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. In today's episode, we have a fascinating interview of Jane Moe. Jane Moe had a near-death experience during routine surgery. She came back and wrote a book called Visions of Heaven, and she talks about her experience in heaven, and I think you'll find this very fascinating and inspiring as well. So here now is the interview of Jane Moe and her near-death experience. No, thank you so much for being here. Sure, my pleasure. And, uh, well, I think you know how, how I like to roll here. Um, people aren't really here to, to listen to me because I don't have any cool experiences. I just get to listen to them and ask a couple questions. So okay. I'd love to hear about why we're here today. I'm an author and I wrote a book called Visions of Heaven and it's actually about my near-death experience. In 2006, I went in for major surgery and it didn't go real well. The reason I know it didn't go very well is because all of a sudden, there's two of me. I'm up here and I'm looking down at these doctors who are trying furiously to get my heart, I guess, started again. And I remember that I had traveled through this amazing light. And as I got to the end of this light, and I knew I was two people, I turned around and the man was walking towards me. And all of a sudden I knew, wait a minute, where am I? I know. And I said to him, are you God? And the man was really sweet. And he said, I can understand why you might feel that way or think that way but actually I am your husband's dad and I'm like my husband's dad okay um but you're dead and he goes (laughs) and you're in heaven Uh, right yeah (laughs) so I'm like wow wait a minute and at the same time I knew that I was a body and a spirit and a soul and yet looking down at myself I could see that there was a body laying down there that was exactly like me, only I was completely different. I had these senses that were like, not just 5D, but like 20D. And I could see and I could smell, and the colors were absolutely incredible. And they were colors that we don't have here on Earth. And the colors that we do have here on Earth I could never possibly explain them because like the gold, I saw a lot of gold and white and the gold is not like we see gold. It's like, uh, if you can imagine the most beautiful, gorgeous gold in the world with silver mixed into it, and yet it's moving and loving and speaking and receiving. And that's just two of the colors. (laughs) And I looked at um, the man and I said, so, why am I here? And he said, well, God called you here because he has a message for you. And I said, okay, great. What's the message? And he said, God told me to tell you when you know it, you'll understand what your message is. And he said, so I want to tell you that you were brought here to jumpstart um, uh, this message that you're going to take back to earth. And he said, This is your gift. Your gift is that you will remember seeing heaven. You will remember everything that you see. And I want to tell you, Richard, your husband's also been given a gift. He has been given the gift of faith, understanding, and believing. And he said, you'll never believe you saw me. So I'm going to tell you some details about my life so that when I share these with you and you share these with him, He's going to know that you really saw me. So he went on to say, 
I was born in, in the Philippines, so you can never find a birth certificate, but I was born in the Philippines. I was raised in the Hawaii Islands. Uh, when I was a little boy, we ran around and we didn't wear shoes. And so when I came to the mainland and I was a profession, professional, I wouldn't tie up my shoelaces. And he says, so we'll share those with Richard so he'll know that, you know, that you've really seen me because I've been dead for a long time. And then he looked at, at this, turned around, looked at this door and he turned back to me and he said, would you like to see something amazing? And I'm thinking, wait, isn't this amazing enough? And he said, this is the door to heaven. And I'm only going to open it a little bit because you're not ready to see everything that heaven has to offer. And I looked at this door and it's, again, this like silver, white, gold door. But the colors in the door were like welcoming me and wanting me and knowing me. And this music, this unbelievable music that was coming out of this door, I wish I could describe it because I want everybody to know it. But I was, he opened it only maybe a quarter of an inch, just a little tiny bit. And I looked inside and I could see, this was the door to heaven. So I looked inside and I could see heaven and I could see billions of people walking around, but it wasn't crowded. And then I noticed that there were a lot of people who were gathered together, maybe like a city or like a town. And as I was wondering what it was, the image popped into my head that these were families that could be together forever because they lived a godly life here on earth. And as I understood that, I'm thinking, so I can see my dad and my mom and my grandparents when I pass? And Richard's dad turned to me and he said, he already knew what I was thinking and answered the question, yes, families can be together forever. And then I'm, all of a sudden I'm feeling this love and this wave of, of emotions coming from, the, from within the door. And it gave me, I can't even say chills, goosebumps, but also I felt this image of love. There was so much love that I was receiving. And it was like every cell was leaping for joy, like it knew what this love was all about. And it was it was almost so overwhelming, I, I started crying. And Richard's dad, his he goes by, by the name Junior, he kind of picked me up and he said, now I want you to look inside again. And I looked inside and I could see the Lord sitting in like a chair and, and he was taking children up onto his lap. And they were children of all ages, and I, as I watched this happening, I understood that there were babies, children of all ages, and that babies who have been aborted or have been lost in miscarriage, they don't die. They go to heaven too. And I, I didn't know that. And as Jesus was taking a child up onto his lap, they were playing with his beard and playing with his long hair and he was listening to them that child and talking to that child but at the same time he was listening to everybody else at the same time and talking to everybody else at the same time and they couldn't understand it so I looked at Richard's dad Junior and I said because Jesus can do this and then I I looked around a little more at heaven and he said, you only, you're only gonna be here a little while longer because the Lord said, it's not your time. He's gonna send you back. But I saw these, this waterfall and these flowers and this water that was falling was like singing praises to our heavenly father and to Jesus. And you could understand, even though it wasn't like in an English kind of language, you could understand exactly what this water was saying. And then, just to give you an example of the life there, I looked at this rose, and it, it, it was like it was calling to me, beckoning, but at the same time, loving the Lord. And every petal, every little part of this rose glorified the Lord. 
and it had like like cells of music and sound and colors these colors that you will never see till you go to heaven because there are, there are no earthly words to describe how beautiful it was and so i looked at um, Richard's dad again and I said I want to go in there I want to go in heaven and he said no I have to send you back now it's not your time and then before I knew it I opened my eyes and I was in the recovery room it didn't hurt I didn't feel anything other than joy but because I was told that part of my gift would be to remember heaven I knew where I was and my husband came and he was so scared because they told him there were problems during surgery and he said, Jane, Jane, are you okay? And I looked up and I said, I saw your dad, Richard, while they were operating on me. And my husband goes, he leans over my the gurney and he goes, Jane, you couldn't have seen my dad. My dad's been dead for 50 years. 50? Are you okay? 50 or 15? <laughs> 50 years. 50, He'd so he passed away young. A long, long time. And I, he said, you couldn't have seen him. And I looked up at him, I said, I did see him. I saw him in heaven. He told me you wouldn't believe that I saw him. So he told me these details. And I rattled off about where he was born, where he was raised, um, details about not wearing, tying up his shoes, how he came to the mainland for college. The whole time I'm telling Richard this, his eyes are getting bigger and bigger and all of a sudden he starts to cry and he's almost sobbing. This nurse comes over and she says, are you okay? And Richard looked at him and he said, she saw my dad. She really saw my dad. And the nurse looked at him and looked back at him and said, you know, we hear this sometimes when a patient comes out of surgery. It's really weird, isn't it? <laughs> And Richard looked at him and he said, it's not weird. Can you tell me more, Jane? So I explained to him that I had been taken to heaven because I was to learn a message and bring it back to earth and share this message. And it took me, and, and Richard said, well, what's your message? And I said, I don't know. Your dad told me when it's time, I would know. And it took me years, years to actually understand the messages there is an afterlife. And I didn't really, the religion that I was raised with, I had no idea what happened when you died. The heaven that I saw, paradise. How would I describe paradise? Because I saw oceans and waters and snow skiing and horses and all kinds of sports and the most beautiful images that you could ever see. My idea of heaven was like when I went to Hawaii. Oh, this is heaven. Oh, this ice cream's heaven. Oh, I'm having so much, you know, so much fun with my family. This is heaven. And what kind of a father would we have if he didn't give us everything that we thought was paradise? And so that's my message. We'll be right back with more after this message. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us each week for an exciting and inspirational podcast dealing with angel encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. So tune in each week and share it with your friends. After all, they could use a little inspiration in their life, too. That's The Watchman on the Wall podcast, and now you can find us on YouTube. We return now with part two of the near-death experience of Jane Moe. I realized that we do live, um, we do have an afterlife, and that we always were, we're God's children, we always were, we came here to learn some lessons, I guess lessons, we all know what they are, and then when we return to our Heavenly Father, and we have lived a godly life, 
we receive all the gifts that he has to share and we can share them with our families and our loved ones. That's quite an experience. That was just kind of the beginning for you too, right? I think that's one of the things that makes your story really compelling. And partly one of the questions I knew that I wanted to ask is why, why do you think it was your husband's father that met you? Do you think there was like a reason behind why kind of your journey started with your father-in-law? Mm -hmm. I think there's two reasons. The night before my surgery, I was, well, I was actually having uh, shattered my ankle. And, oh. and yeah, and so the night before, I knew, the only thing I know about Richard's dad is that he died when Richard was 15 and that he had gone in for a simple surgery and had not come out alive. Oh. And so I got down on my knees the night before and I prayed to God, please don't let this happen to me. I, I don't want this Richard to go through this again. And because I knew Richard's dad was in heaven, I thought, hmm, I'll just ask him because he might have more sway with the powers that, you know, that be. So that is one reason I think because I prayed to both God and his dad, I think that's one reason. The other reason is because I think if I came back with a story to tell, and it was my fam something about my family, details that I already knew, an ancestor that I was already familiar with. How would I get somebody to believe me? Sure. Yeah, and most yeah. people, uh, yeah. this is most people's <laughs> reaction, although now in 2006, near-death experience books were just starting to be popular. The the story was just becoming of interest. But when I went home that night, here's, here's, here's how God carried on my gift. I went to sleep and you know how you dream. All of a sudden I have this dream that Richard's dad Jr. is there. And he says, hi Jane, I'm dreaming. So, okay. See, I told you you'd remember me. And he said, I want you to meet somebody special. This is Richard's grandfather, Kilmer Oscar Moe Jr. And this is Richard's mother. And he reached into an, an area, I can't really call it a cloud, but this, but a part of heaven. And she stepped forward and she said, Jane, I'm so excited to meet you. And she said, Richard's not going to believe that you saw me either. So she named off a whole bunch of details so I could tell him. And when I woke up, I told Richard about my dream, and he started crying and said, Jane, you're describing my mother as if she was really here. What's happening? How can this be happening? And I said, I don't know, but I think it has something to do with the message. And so every night, not every night, but several nights a week, I, I would have dreams about ancestors, Richard's ancestors, my ancestors, um, stories that ancestors wanted me to know. And believe me, believe me, Richard would go and check out every little detail to see, you know, if I had all the details right. I always did. And one time I remember a beautiful lady walks up to me. She says, hi, Jane. Do you know who I am? And I said, no. This was the first time I met one of my ancestors. And she said, I'm your Aunt Carol. I said, no, I don't have. It. And this is also, also in a dream. But you know, in a dream, you can talk back to people. And I said, I don't have an Aunt Carol. And she said, yes, you do. I'm your dad's little, little sister. And I looked at her and I said, still. <laughs> My dad doesn't have an Aunt Carol, and he said, Jane, I was still born. I died in, in the womb. And he said, but you can tell your dad I live, and I went to heaven, and that the, and that the only reason they named me Carol is so that I could be buried into the, in the cemetery. So I called my dad, the, I, I always write all these things down. So I called my dad the next, the, that same day, and I said, Dad, why didn't you ever tell me you have a sister by the name of Carol? And he said, because I don't. She's dead. She's always been dead. And he said, well, click. He hung up on me because, you know, <laughs> once again. Um, but he called me back, and he, he, he said, 
well, do you have any details of her? And I said, yep, she's beautiful. She has blonde curly hair. She told me to tell you that she saw you crying outside the birthing room because back then men couldn't go in. He wanted to go inside and hold her. And she said, you tell my brother, he can hold me all he wants when he gets to heaven. And so those are some examples, you know, of dreams that I've had. And I know it's, it sounds, you know, <laughs> but everybody has dreams. The only difference with these dreams are all the details are accurate about these family members and ancestors. And one another important part of my message is our ancestors are waiting for us when it's our time to go. They know, they know that, that it's our time and they're there waiting for you, welcoming you, helping you pass on to the other side. And I, I can't tell you how amazing that is to know that when our bodies die, we don't die. Our soul goes on and joins the afterlife. It is a message indeed, and I feel like the fact that you do have some of these details, and what's tricky about things of faith sometimes, right, is that people look for those, and they want to have, like, I need, I need that, I have to have this proof, and a lot of times it doesn't come, but I have to feel like some of these stories are happening now for a reason, and there's people out there that they, they need to know that life goes on and that you you have an important part with that and it's part of the reason maybe even why God is like look okay I'm not about this I'm not just going to say hey here's all the details otherwise you don't need faith but every once in a while I'm going to help you and give you a little bit and say like look this is real absolutely and, you know everybody has uh, and I think for sure that that's an incredible mission and story that you have um one and it I, still takes faith to believe what I'm for saying. For sure, yeah. Because the, people don't know me, and they don't know Richard, and they don't know um, that I have no, knew nothing about his ancestors. And so it still takes a lot of faith. Yeah. But I try. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I took away from it, um, what I thought was really beautiful, something I don't... I, I, I can't say that I am by any means like a near-death experience expert. I... Scott Drummond was a neighbor of mine and I interviewed him and that kind of started me on this idea of like even knowing hardly anything about this particular subject. Um, But part of what I thought you said was really beautiful is describing some of what you saw on the other side of like what we hear if those that believe in God is like creation. Um, You know, you can look at a rose and potentially see God in those things, but it's even, even more amplified, right? And I feel like I feel that way um, with my personal beliefs, you know, looking at the stars and looking at everything, all the patterns and everything around us that, that, you know, there's a creator. Um, But I thought it was really beautiful that that's almost even amplified on the other side to even a higher degree. It's almost like you can hear creation talking to you, which is neat. That's cool. Yep. And every, every ounce of its body, whether it's a tree, a flower, a rose, um, a, a pet. Yeah. Our pets go to heaven. Yeah. They all amplify this love yeah. for the Lord. And everything that they're seeing, doing, singing, moving is all about loving Him. Yeah. So did that, did that give you an extra appreciation here for those things here? Do you almost like see that a little bit more? I do. In creation now. I do. Yeah. And I... I, I I never really was a tree hugger, if yeah. you know what I mean. But now, I, when I go, f- I've always walked around every day. But now, I look at life totally different. Sure. When I see a worm, I'll pick it up and move it out of the way. When I see a snail, I pick it up so nobody's going to step on it. But that's just that's just part of my reality now. Yeah. Is that everything that's living has a spirit, and everything that has a spirit will go to heaven someday. Yeah. And isn't it wonderful? I touched just briefly on the pets. All dogs go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> just go see who wrote that Disney movie. They knew what was going on, right? I know. Yeah. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> what kind of father, heavenly father, would we have? Would would we have that would give you 
something to love so much as a pet. You know, they're family members. Only to take when it dies, take it away, and, well, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, they're always part of our life. I love that. And so, in some of my dreams, I've seen uh, Gypsy, my first horse, and I've seen Ichabod, our first family dog, and even the little goldfish that I cried, boo hoo hoo, when we had to flush it down the toilet. Um, I, they're all there. They're all there. So you can take it with you. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so last question, uh, that was back in 2005, right? So do you continue, did this kind of open up the other side to you and you still continue to have visions now? I do. From the other side? Yeah. I do. I see people differently uh, as well as the afterlife differently. Now when I look at people, I can sense and understand and sometimes even see the spirits and souls of their loved ones because they're always they're always with you. Yeah. And so and and there sometimes I know things like that woman might be pregnant. I know before she knows. So that's part of my gift. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing that gift with uh, our audience today and You're I'm welcome. sure it will help people. Um that's a pretty clear defined message that you came to the realization like there is an afterlife. Hey, well, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure to get to know you and to learn some more stuff about the other side that I didn't know about either yet. So thank you. Appreciate it. Hello again. This is The Watchman. Please join us on our new video channel called Encounters from Beyond the Veil. It's the same exciting content as our audio podcast, but in a shorter, but yet a video format. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss any of our episodes. That's Encounters from Beyond the Veil, exclusively found on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Any comments or suggestions you may have, you can send to the Watchman on the Wall 2020 at gmail.com. We encourage you to subscribe so you'll always be notified of our future episodes. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the Watchman on the Wall podcast.